I'm Felicia. And I'm Giancarlo. And this... I don't know what that move was, so I'm just doing it. <laughs> He's just following me. And this is our <laughs> This is our review of... This is our review of... This is our review of... Let them eat shrimp. It's a crustacean sensation. <laughs> Let them eat shrimp. So he's going to eat Nemo. Pita is not gonna be happy about this. I'm just saying. Just Who's not gonna be Pita? Who's Pina? Why? Wow, oh, all the girls just went. Ah. Pita, what? Pita, dude. Pita. Who's Pita? What? The Pita bread? In this tile-laying set collection game, players will control fish to eat, swim, and spawn while trying to avoid the big bad sharks. The player with the most points from tiles accumulated at the end game should not all others be eliminated first will win. We'll show you the three player advanced setup to showcase the more intricate aspects of the game compared to the simplistic base tile laying version. Place two double sided board pieces together connecting them lengthwise, separate all the tiles into respective pools, take two of the triangle shaped green fish and drop them one on each tile. Place each onto the space where its nearest rests. These will be the starting tiles. Each player will place their player mat in front of them. With one of each tile in their respective space, they'll take a player shield and take three egg tokens, placing them behind it. Choose a starting player and give them the first player black pawn. You're ready for the Nautilus life cycle. Each round, players will take turns placing one of their tiles onto the board. To do so, a tile must be placed so as to have one edge touching another edge of another tile already on the board. Corner to corner does not count. Every time you place a tile, you'll take back into your personal supply, place them back your shield, tokens as depicted by what has been covered on the board. The red, green, yellow, and blue shapes simply means you take those fish tiles into your personal supply. These are important for two reasons. One, to replenish the tiles on the player mat in future rounds, and two, for set collection, which will give you points at the end game. Covering a shrimp will give you that token, which is worth two points at the end, the starfish will have you roll a die. On the die you'll find the four fish tiles you can gain, as well as a starfish and a shark on one of the sides. Rolling a starfish will have you choose which tile to take rather than a rolled one, but rolling a shark will yield nothing. Lastly, a shark figure is what you want to avoid when placing a tile. This will have you roll the die again, but to your detriment, making you lose one of the four fish tiles rolled a choice of fish tiles should you roll a shark, or nothing lost should they roll a starfish. After placing one tile and receiving the rewards, play passes to the player on the left. When all tiles from their player mat has been placed, or each player took four turns, we move on to the next round. Now each player will replenish from their personal supply the four fish tiles as depicted by their player board. If they can't replenish that tile, they must use an egg token to take that tile from the general supply for each such missing tile. If they cannot trade in an egg token for a missing tile, they are eliminated from the game with their score forfeit. A new round begins with the new start player until the end game is reached. This triggers in one of three ways. All players are knocked out except for one, in which case they auto win. At the start of a player's turn, there are no sea creatures on the board besides sharks or at the start of a player turn, there is no legal way to place a hexagon fish tile. When the end game is triggered, we go to the scoring. Each set of four different fish tiles scores five points, three different tiles three points, and two different tiles one point. Each egg token you have not used counts as a wild fish tile for set completion. Lastly, each shrimp token is worth two points. Total the points up and the player with the most wins. Should there be a tie, the player with the most egg token wins. Let Them Eat Shrimp is elegantly simple with the advanced gameplay offering some good tactical choices. Every turn you need to be aware of what you'll need for the next round in terms of tiles while still trying to diversify for your end score, all while not giving away too many good positions to your opponent. But the tactics are not overwhelming. The game has this calm zen feel to it that reminds me a lot of Lanterns, but this game, for me anyways, seems a little more challenging while being suitable for any gamer level. Sure, there'll be times when there is just no good place to place your tiles, but that's just bad luck like any other game, so only a half point penalty. Lots of good quality components, but artistically the game did bother me a little. It blends this realistic style, but then has sharks with hats, headphones, and bling bling necklaces. It just didn't do it for me. And though the theme is fine, 
I do think it'll work against the game in terms of reaching out to people. Which is unfortunate because it does play well with the two different modes, variants like not rolling the die and the mini squid expansion which adds a lot to replay value. And with little analysis paralysis and a short duration, each game can be played as a filler or make it an all-nighter. Lastly, what Let Them Eat Shrimp is really good at is player scaling. Adding a board piece for 4-5 to five players or simply playing it as a 2 player game, it should offer a very light yet solid experience. Let Them Eat Shrimp gets 7.5 out of 10.